Hey guys, welcome to Surfing Show. I'm Noel Salas, and today we're in Hermosa Beach, California, visiting Dennis Jarvis with Spider Surfboards. Dennis, thanks for having us. No, I appreciate you guys coming up. Yeah, we're Thank excited. You. So this board's called the Fireball, but before we dive into this board, you surfed on tour like, what, 78 to like 81, World Championship Tour? What happened? Yeah, so back in the day, it was called the IPSA, and uh, it was, you know, I mean, the actual starting of the tour that we know nowadays, Randy Rarick gave me a call, Michael Benavides, Chris Barella, and I don't think Purpose went with, with us, but uh, Alan Sarlo, and he said, hey, if you guys all get together and you pool your money, we can get a discounted rate. So we all took off and we went to uh, do the Gunson 500 and uh, in South Africa, and then we came back to Brazil, and I was called a Hallie and people were throwing rocks at me. It was kind of crazy. But, uh, you know, it was, it was probably the most educational experience of my life. Awesome. Um, and then we came back here, the Bud Tour started, and we were able to eke out a little bit of a living just surfing locally and not having to spend our money on traveling. So I remember when I first saw Spider Surfboards, mm -hmm. um, the momentum era was pretty strong. I remember like Conan Hayes, Greg Browning. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of guys that were part of his Taylor Steele's crew that were riding these boards. So tell us a little bit about, you know, I know you were surfing on tour. Did you start shaping your own boards? And then how did you get to that? Well, so actually it did happen. The second time I went to South Africa, um, my shaper uh, made me a bunch of dogs. They didn't work. And it seemed like the water was super salty or something because I was way above water. But I took the surfboard to Safari Surfboards in South Africa, which is Spider Murphy's company. And I said, if I give you this brand new board I rode once, can I get some materials? And he had said, sure. Or whoever was working there. It wasn't Spider because he was in the shaping room, I'm sure. And I was able to, because it was a lull, you know, there was no contest happening. And, uh, and I kind of spent a day in the shaping room and carved out a board and I wrote it. I think I made it out of two heats, but I knew at that time that I had the ability. Because I started as an airbrusher, actually. So I started when I was uh, 17 as an airbrusher for everybody in the area. Rick Surfboards, you know, uh, Unity, there was Jacobs, and I was the guy that was doing the color fades. Mm. Um, so I have some sort of a artistic background, hand and eye coordination. And, uh, and then, like I said, when the Bud Tour happened, um, we kind of came home and we were able to make a little living here and I still manufactured all my own surfboards. So Dennis, tell us a little bit where the Fireball come from, originate from? Well, uh, I think everybody in the surf industry that's experimenting right now remembers the Ben Ipa Stinger you know, step bottom that was, you know, had Larry Bertelman, you had Mark Liddell, you know, you had uh, Dane Aloha as well, and then uh, Buttons, of course. Um, and I don't know if, if maybe Ben understood what he was really creating, but uh, at the same time in the 70s, there was another guy, and uh, his name was John Kelly. It was a California surfer that went, ended up going to Australia, and this is how the fireball came into my life, right? Um, John Kelly was riding single fins and he would put a step behind the single fin in the back rather than in front. And he went over to uh, where Phil Myers is an Australian bloke, really cool guy, six channel, you know, crazy shaper sure. guy. He's, he's, he's just very talented, um, kind of around the Al Byrne kind of an era. And, um, and he took a look at it and he goes, oh my gosh, I got to figure out what to do with that. So he started adjusting that step up and down. And at the time, like I said, Al Byrne was making those deep sixes, right? right. With Byrne surfboards. And, and he kind of started incorporating that into his design. And through that process, um, he made one board that really worked well. And uh, as Phil had told me, he was home one day and Tommy Peterson and Michael Peterson came over to his house because they're all living kind of close to each other. And, uh, and they freaked out on it. And they went, oh my gosh, so this is the, this is the, the mid-70s, early mid-70s. Um, fast forward to uh, where we are in, 19, now we go to 1994, 1993-94. And, you know, Tommy Peterson's still shaping a couple of weird boards here and there. And my licensee, was, his name was Jack Knight. In the 90s, we were something, by the way. And so he, uh, uh, Tommy was also a shaper at Jack Knight's uh factory and um and 
Tom Curran, who was on our team at the time for 94, 95, had gone down there to hang out with, you know, the whole search crew. And Sonny Miller, was they were taken off on another trip to the Mentways. And, uh, and he threw the board in a board bag because Tom never took a surfboard with him. He always used Frankie Overholzers or Byron Howers or anybody. So I'd send, you know, 20 boards knowing that Curran would be picking one of those. Well, this one got thrown in the bag, and apparently it's in the search video where the waves were kind of mushy, breaking on the outside. Board was 5'6", I believe, and he was riding 10-foot, you know, incredible waves. Um, through that process, uh, I understood that he still wanted to continue riding these and experimenting. And so I actually flew, had Tommy Peterson fly over, and he lived with me for a little bit. And I would send him around to Brazil to go shape here and there. And we incorporated our ideas together and try to make it a, a better model than what it was. You mentioned mid-90s, 2018 now. I'm sure there's some modifications. Tell us what sparked an interest mm. to do the fireball again. Well, through the 90s, I realized that wholesaling surfboards was a, was a really tough battle. Um, I kind of pulled back out of that world of you know, 12,000, 13,000 boards a year because it's very difficult to do a high standard board and that much quality, at least in those days. Um, so I would have to say that for the, until a year ago, I kind of lost my passion. You know, I still shaped, but it wasn't fun anymore. It was like I was coming into work and I was kind of trudging through and doing the job and the boards looked good, but I just, I didn't feel right. And a year ago, I actually moved into this facility here and built my little shaping room here. And it's a, four blocks away from my house and I could make my, ride my scooter up here and, and it's my solitude and um, a place. So I thought to myself, I go, what could I do now that I'm kind of feeling good? And, I was, and I've learned so much in the past year on shaping. I learn every day I come in here, I learn something new. Something changes the foil or something get, makes my rail more perfect, right? And, and then I learn even more from that. And I, and I had an old, actually, actually in this corner, I had an old fireball fish that was cut by KKL mm. back in the day, right? So we're talking 95 and it was yellow, but I carried it with me wherever I went. And I pulled the board out and I looked at it and it was so ugly. And I went, you know what? There's something here, right? You know, I got to figure this out. What is it? And I sat down and I, I designed a program um, and I had a board cut and the first one kind of came out okay. And then the second one I did and it came out and it looked really good, but I, I was still doing the channels without the chamfer in them, mm -hmm. right? Which is a big difference between this and the other boards. And I go, well, what, what am I going to do to make this different? And so I actually sat down and I Googled speed boats. I, I'm not a hydrodynamic guy. I don't understand that stuff. I'm a I'm a D minus student who shouldn't have graduated Maricosta, but I did. <laughs> right. And so I sat down and the beauty of the internet and Instagram, by the way, is I started looking at stuff and understanding that, you know, these speedboats are knocking 10 seconds off the record here and there. And what were they doing? They were doing a thing called a hydro step. And there were also, there was a company called Gorilla, um, Gorilla Space or something. Like and, and they were messing with the bottoms of the boats rather than, they used to make them super shiny and, I, and, and one of the blogs that I found, this guy wanted to enter this race, but his boat wasn't polished. But he entered it anyhow, and he won. And I went, hmm. how'd that happen? And they, they go, your boat wasn't shiny. Well, the reality is that when you have something that's super shiny, the water molecule can ricochet off of it and cause friction hmm. and slow you down. And because his boat was textured, little bubbles of oxygen, like when you take your hand two inches under the surface and you get a cavitation, you look and you'll see bubbles coming off of your fingers, right? That was it. And I went, oh my gosh, that's the fireball bottom. Mm. How do I bring that into what I'm doing now? So actually the first one I did was I was still trying to, I kept looking at my fingers and trying to figure out how do I turn this into that, right? right? And you can see it has a very similar quality to mm -hmm. it. And I realized that that you have to sheath the water, you have to break the water, it can't flow. And all channel bottoms are, are meant to flow, right? It's a resistance, it's a surface area to direct water and give you forward bite and direction. And that's why I say that you should ride any six channel, you first start out with the smallest fin you can and move them up to bigger. Well, when I did that, um, it just looked unbelievable. You know, I mean, it takes, 
forever to do these channels, right? But I do them myself rather than in a computer because depending on where the board is actually gonna surf most of the time, it dictates where I put this outside mm. uh, channel. Right, if you're gonna be in Hawaii, I'm probably gonna move it a, you know, a quarter of an inch more over because it gives you that bite in the hall of surf. California, I'm gonna move this in. So I can dictate how the board's gonna release and how it's gonna drive by where I place these channels. Now these channels aren't meant to give you drive or forward direction. They're meant to give you the cavitation in between your feet. And I don't know when you wrote it if you felt a little difference, but it gives you a little bit more punch and the only channel on here that's supposed to give you direction and bite is this channel running down the center here. And this is a resistance channel. And if you take the circumference of the area on this channel, it adds up to about three inches. Actually, this is an older, you know, this, we, you got this board a while ago, but it actually, actually adds up to about three inch of area surface. And that's why you can go with a smaller fin because mm. that's gonna give you the direction, especially because we're breaking the water off the tail to give you that bite. Mm. And then you go from the smallest fin and you start going bigger until you feel very comfortable with it. But what we used to do on the, uh, in fact, I have, one of the, I have one of the first ones that Tommy Peterson shaped and I have one of the first ones that we did back in the 90s. And it's just a very soft channel that goes just like all other channels, it kind of rolls up into it. I found that by doing the, the chamfered edges and, and the beveled edges, that water is sheathed off the bottom and it does create a cavitation. And in this area here, especially on, you know, kind of mushier waves, it'll carry you through the flat section. Mm -hmm. That's what it's come back to us on. And it adds a little speed as well. What you explained about the channels was brilliant. It's really hard for me to understand that kind of language. So maybe for me and our viewers, as we're learning about the fireball, maybe you could show me, or we can talk a little bit about water flow. Okay. I see I see channels that are towed in a little bit or even towed out. I mean, if there's a lot going on here and there's, there's these kind of angles going on too. Right. So let's talk about that a little bit. Like, Tell me water flow wise. Can you do that? So, so the middle channel, of course, is a resistance channel. It's to give you drive or punch. Uh, you know, everybody calls it a little different, but when you have a wall, the resistance, of course, is going to push it against and away, okay. right, and give you forward direction. Um, and that's this channel right. And here. that's the center channel. Yeah, okay. right down the center. Right. Um, and if you notice, we have a so this one here. I've, I've kind of um, pulled back from these, these were about five eighths of an inch thick and I pulled them back to three eighths, the step. Um, because what happens here is it's a, it's a flex step, right? So we're actually taking away five eighths of foam in the tail in that section. So you get this twisting and I don't know, did you, did you find any, did you feel any kind of flex out of that area right there? Not necessarily. I mean, it's really hard with me with PUs, they flex um, the board definitely rode different than what I'm used to, and it just seemed like in in this area right here, it had this get up and go at times where it just kind of like, I'm like, whoa, and it's like it just kept doing that to me, especially front side, yeah. which is great, but I can't say that I was noticing flex. I was just noticing a burst of speed. Right. Um, one thing that I have been taught, anybody that orders these things is, if you're a front-footed surfer, you gotta let me know if we're gonna build you one, right? And I know I, from watching you and your show, you're a back-footed surfer, right? And so you lay it down hard and you, and you lean into that, that tucked edge back here. Sure. But if, if you are a front-footed surfer, I have to move the hips up or else you're just not gonna get the drive that you're looking for. Like I'm a twin fin guy, I'm, a, I'm the guy that's front-footed surfer, sure. I always have been. So I would put this about dead center on the hips. Um, but talking about the w water and the contour just depends i guess on the the steepness of the wave as to what you're doing if you're if you're wick walking through the inside and you're just trying to gain, gain momentum to go rail to rail um sometimes um and not all the time the flex can can um I don't know if it's gonna bog you down, but if, if you're trying to ride it off your front foot, and that's what I'm thinking might have happened on the, the wave that you said was kind of a boggy wave. If you try to ride it off your front foot, it's not actually gonna push water, but you have to take a look at the way this board is built. It's built different than any other board on the market. So it's two surfboards combined in one. We have a single barrel concave running all the way through to the step. 
Then we have the step that breaks into a paneled V off the tail. And then you have this deep dish concave a channel going through here where it steps up from, you know, uh, three eighths of an inch to, what is that? That's about three quarters of an inch. So if you have water passing through this area, the, as I was talking about before, cavitation is where oxygen is produced. This isn't the actual definition, but I mean, I'm gonna try to explain it to you. Sure. It's where oxygen is created. You got hydrogen and oxygen makes water and it, it separates the two by creating a, a, a force. And so the oxygen is released next to it. So if you have a break and you can break, it's like I said, you take your fingers, you go underneath the water, you're gonna see air bubbles right behind it. If Depending on the steepness of the wave, and I don't know how, how big the wave was that you bogged down on, um, it could, uh, and we were talking about fins too, right? Yeah, I didn't mention anything about bogging yet um, until i put a large fin in right oh okay but i was just talking about water flow we were talking about how the how the board's flexing because of where the the step is here and you asked me if i noticed any extra flex and i just oh. said that i noticed extra bursts of speed at times especially front side the board would just take off um that was with the medium fins oh okay you recommended medium fins to me because our community knows 95 percent of the time i'm riding a large fin <laughs> yeah so for me to put a, a medium fin in i'm just thinking okay i'm going to get the extra get speed i need from the design itself okay and when i put the medium fins in it felt great at no at, at no point did i ever feel like the board was sticky or it was biting and it didn't matter if i was on a steep section or a flat faced wave like kind of just rolling you know mm -hmm. i felt like i could drive through that so it felt great with the medium fin. Now, when I put that large fin in, mm -hmm. I caught one left. I came off the bottom. It was overhead. I came off the bottom. It was relatively steep, and I felt like the large fins gave the tail that lift, and it was like going fast as I was going down. And as soon as I went to hit the turn, mm -hmm. the board just put the brakes on, and then I bogged. I tried to come out of that turn and do a turn, and it just was like the fins in the, in the channels were arguing. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um and and that's why I think you know Al Byrne and those guys from back in the day they you know their fins were at least an inch and a half shorter than you know even at pipe when they were single fins their their middle fin like you take a look at those guys and they're all riding a much smaller back fin on a single fin day sure, sure. Uh, single fin boards when they had those deep sixes because there is that water flow and it's a resistance there's a lot going on in here and again um, I'm using Google in hydrodynamics and, and trying to explain in, in layman's terms for even myself to understand why they do what they do. So we all know that the only time water is, is champ, channeled directly down here is when you're paddling. Once you're on a wave, you're rail to rail transitions and we wanna keep them loose. And I'm just saying, when you put the bigger fin in, if you notice, most people, they, they break their, their tucked edge in the back right in front of mm -hmm. their front fins. Whereas on this, we don't have that giving moment. There's a really hard tucked edge from here back. And, and what that does, it sheaths the water off directly. I'm thinking with a bigger fin, they might've been fighting each other right. because you do have this. And I could see that might catch a rail if you have too big of a surface area that's already a resistance. Right to give you the forward direction, right? Well, Dennis, um, the fireball. I mean, you've, you've broken it down for us. I, I gotta tell you this, I am truly enjoying riding this board. We're already done shooting for the, the review, mm -hmm. so we've got all the footage. We wanted to do this vlog for our community mm -hmm. and introduce them to you, kind of what this board's all about, and you've done that for us. I'll tell you this about this board. I, I love to do big, long bottom turns and cutbacks. It's got a ton of speed. Um, I was out at Lowers, what, two days ago, and Jason. Shibata. Jason Shibata was out on one, and his looked just like mine, so we ended up immediately having something to talk about. There's yeah. 40, 50 guys now. We're both <laughs> yeah. riding something similar. Uh -huh. His board's a little bit different than, than mine, and maybe we'll talk about that in the review. Mm -hmm. But um, epic board. I'm having a lot of fun on it. It's completely different than anything I've ever ridden, and I'll say this another day of learning about surfboards it yeah. just never ends for me it never ends for me though you know to be honest with you I, every day i go in the shaping room i promise you i learn something new whether it's going from a 120 grid sandpaper down to a 220 and all of a sudden i can roll that rail and and not 
pinch it, it's just it's amazing. So yeah, I mean, surfing is crazy, right? It's you know, cool. the beach is the water and the ocean and all that. Fun yeah, stuff. super fun. Well, guys, mm -hmm. I hope you enjoyed today's vlog. Dennis Jarvis, Spider Surfboards. Until the review, this will drop next Monday. So stay tuned. We'll see you in the water. Bye bye.